message, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. I want to remind everybody, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. There's a PayPal link down there for anybody who wants to share some love. All is appreciated. And, of course, the StreamYard link is down there for anybody who wants to join the panel. And we're going to get into it tonight talking about uh, full armor, um, where it comes from, and what it delineates after that. So we're going to go over some etymological terms as it relates to ambassador, family, and menage. As we know in menage a trois, we're going to see that. Um, and whether we're in the United States. See, this is the investment aspect of the United States as a corporate entity. And in the investment, as we saw through NASDAQ uh, definitions, an investment is the creation of money. And it takes a partnership with that corporate entity and an assignee that can sign the documents that so create that, quote, money. Before we get into it, though, I've got this little short I wanted to show everybody. So let's take a look at this. If you at all can afford to do it, take your kids out of government-run schools. And don't necessarily trust that whatever private school you put them into isn't pushing this junk, because a lot of the private schools are doing the same thing. Take back that time with your children. This is going to be a generational fight. It could start two or three generations down when all of a sudden you have a bunch of kids stepping forward going, I was lied to by everyone that raised me. Or you can take positive action. That sounds familiar. You've heard me say that many times. All my life, I grew up knowing people were lying to me. Saying, fuck you, you're not my daddy. I ain't going to listen to you. I don't believe you. Right now to make sure that you're not going to have to compete with a whole system of government-run institutions or government-sponsored institutions that are telling your kids to hate all of the things that you believe are absolutely essential to their well-being, emotionally, socially, economically, poli politically, dogmatically. Politically, but you've got to take control of that back for yourself. Don't wait around for a politician to give you permission to do it. Go do it. There doesn't need to be a single vote in Virginia right now for you to make the decision that you're going to play a far more active role within your children's lives with respect to their education, their worldview, what they believe. You can do that right now. No permission. Just takes a lot of work. If that's it. It just takes a lot of work. And that's what I keep saying. The people are handing over that, um, that responsibility, which is a lot of work, over to somebody else for the comfort and convenience of not having to do a lot of work. That's laziness. You're giving up the very spiritual aspect of the most important part of raising children. Bringing them up in the way of the Lord. You're handing them over to a dogmatic system of a political subdivision under a zoning plan. And you've been zoned. You zoned yourself. You zone out on that boob tube watching everybody else's pathetic or dramatic or comedic or mysterious or adventurous lives, wishing and dreaming while you sit there and eat that poison produce food and the, the poison waters and, and juices and drinks and everything. You need to start taking responsibility for what's actually your natural responsibilities. Quit giving those up to somebody else. Quit giving up your right to protect yourself as well as raise that child up under a rod in the ways of the Lord so he shall not waver. I remember distinctly back when I was younger and there was legislation going around the, about child abuse. I didn't know what to think of it at the time, but I see how that's taken away the parental rights of the disciplinary part as being another comfort and convenience to let somebody else do that for you so that when you're 50 years old your mom can look at you and say Keith the police are your authority so yes I do love my mom but I don't give a fuck whether she loves me back the plain truth of it is she is very very wrong she should be ashamed of herself for being so cognitively dissonant set in her ways that she would st sit back and allow these atrocities happen to anybody, let alone somebody she called her own son, and then turn around and say, 
You need to change your last name. We disown you. See, the point is, through the adoption and the change of the name, they never really changed anything in reality. That was all fiction. All my life, people have been lying to me, whether they know it or not. Mom, you fucking lied. As you brought me up in Christian spirituality form of a church, trying to import how important that biblical scripture was and its authority. Where the fuck is your authority then? Even then, who the fuck are you to tell me what to do and who my authority is if you're confused about your own? I urge you all, do not believe me. Do not believe the neighbor. Do not believe the government for crying out loud. Do not believe your mother. Do your research so you know. Learn how to comprehend it in your heart, how it correlates with what's already in your heart, simply on the basis of right and wrong. That'll get you a lot farther than making things so fucking difficult that you try to follow some foreign language. Even English is a foreign language. It's an adoption of foreign language. Therefore, it's merely a foreign language. Lingua franca. It's a vehicular language to bring two cultures together with two separate, distinct languages so they can comprehend each other. Supposedly. So let's get into it. Uh, Like I said, I've got some etymology we're going to look at. And the first one I want to look at is Ambassador. Ambassador. Ambassador as a noun, late 14th century, also an ambassador, diplomatic emissary of a ruler in the court of another. From old French, ambassador, ambassador, which comes via provincial or Old Spanish from Latin, ambactus, a servant, a vassal. Remember, we talked about vessel versus vassal here not too long ago, just last week, I believe. From Celtic, ambiactos, ambiactos. And you can, con- you can draw the conclusion there. Since it's got a foundation of act in it, it's based again upon one's actions. A messenger, servant, around to, to drive, excuse me, to drive, draw out or forth, move. This is simply the conveyance of thought as a greater truth without a need for a language into an action and it needs no one else based in the principle of faith that if I do this it will have a good effect for me I will benefit from it compare embassy forms in am and m were used indiscriminately in English 17th century to 18th century Until 1893, the United States sent and received none, having only ministers, often called ambassadors, who represented the state, not the sovereign. Embassy, position of an ambassador. From French, embassy, mission, charge. Office of ambassador. Charge. A servant is under the charge of the master. He's under the command of the master. He's under the order of the master. He's under the directive 
of the master. <coughs> old French embassy from Italian ambasciata, from old Pro provincial ambassada, office of ambassador, from ghoulish ambactos, dependent. Vassal, one going around, one going around. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And I am his vassal. I fear not, for he has redeemed me. He has called me by thy name. I am his. Who, again, the fuck is you? From roots ambi around to drive, draw out, or forth, move. The meaning, official residence and retinue of an ambassador is from 1764. In earlier use, so we find out that resident, official residence and retinue of an ambassador is just an extension of an official residence. To someone other than like an employee or a contractor. Now we're including ambassador for the term residence. The ambassador being in the court of another, his father, which art in heaven, or his God, however you want to look that. And now they're going to say he officially recited. Pay attention to this language. Tear it apart for what it is. Residence means somebody recited, or it's a res identification. Res ident. I dent. I speak of my body. No one else. Res ident. Determines how you tear down the English language and discern its use for yourself. So you can clarify and define what you are as averse to the person or corporation or um, trust or estate or anything like that. Ambassadorial, of or belonging to an ambassador. Legate. Authorized representative of the Pope. From Old French legate and directly from Latin legatus, ambassador, envoy. So when they legate in the courts, that's the same thing as legal, legal, legal. Credentials, especially in reference to the letters of authorization, authorization given by a government to an ambassador or a greater truth or greater fact would be the providence of grace given to all of us by our father which art in heaven see the similar authorization given by a greater power to be on a mission to speak his word errand angel in old english Aaron Gost was angel. Aaron Draco was ambassador. So, like I said earlier, child of God. That's not my child. Not your children. Though you are their parent, their mom and dad, however you want to look at that, they are still your children in that sense. But ultimately, we are all God's children, and in that we are all God's angels. We are conscripted the same as angels. Messenger. One post shall run to another. Messenger to messenger. To shoe under the king of Babylon. The bearer, or bearer of a verbal or written communication. That the city has fallen at the other end. Plenipotentiary. You guys remember this one, right? Not too long ago. About two weeks ago. Three weeks ago. We spoke about plenipotentiary. As a noun from the 1650s, person invested with full powers to transact any of business, especially with reference to an ambassador. Legacy. This is the one that I talk about. Do you have the legs 
to walk on water? Do, do you have your legacy? Do you have your sea legs? Leg a sea. The body of person sent on a mission to walk on water, just like Jesus. That's your legacy. That's the story. That's the message that you get to follow manually and be so moved by it that you do the same thing. I was so moved by Tom Sawyer and the story of him whitewashing his aunt's fence and the fact that he glorified his aunt. He brought the cause in another's name so he could benefit. And he did so by glorifying his aunt's name and making an honor out of painting the fence to his friends and passers-by, so much so that they were willing to pull things out of their pockets in exchange for letting them put a few strokes of paint on the fence. And accordingly, of course, the more valuable thing you gave him, the longer he let you paint that fence. It's such a great honor. So you have to become your own servitude to yourself, knowing that you can only help yourself by helping others. And the greatest aspect of learning how to help yourself by helping others is learning what others like in life, what their value systems are, and how you can make an exchange so you can get to know each other. All done in peace, fairness. Constructive. Christian Ambassador, Volume 8. 9, 1871, it later was extended to education and became personal. Let's take a look at this one because it's talking right away about constructive criticism. Derived by interpretation, not directly expressed, but inferred from French constructive or directly from medieval Latin constructivist, from Latin construct, past participle stem of construire to heap up, to build up, to pile up, form of come with together, see con, strare, to pile up, to spread, May, meaning pertaining to construction is from 1817, sense of having the quality of constructing. You have a foundation and now you're going to construct the rest of it. Where there was no foundation, you created one by marking it out and then constructed it. And then on that foundation, you're going to continue with the constructing. And therefore, you're going to pile up on top of the foundation. It is from 1841, especially contributive, contri contributing helpfully. So when you're going to that court, like I said, you're the benefactor. You're giving to the beneficiary. However, you're be being denied the access to the benefit. There's a miscommunication there. You're the one that's contributing helpfully, but it's being used against you. How is that happening? Constructively, constructiveness, constructive criticism is attested by 1841, originally in theology and philosophy. And this is why I urge everybody to start learning how to develop their own philosophy. In order to do so, you have to start um, studying philosophy, theology, Socratic logic, things like that, of a higher education. Things that give you basic simpl simplicities about how things work naturally. This is by using objective truths that most everybody will agree on. Though we can't agree on the term God, we all agree that something created all of us. There is a central point of origin somewhere. Most of us almost explicitly agree to that. That's theology. That's the base foundation of theology. Constructive criticism has frequently secured in various departments of scientific inquiry positive results. The value of which cannot be overestimated, but there are not wanting instances in which a destructively critical method has performed services equally as valuable. Remember when we were talking about Socratic logic in that series, it talked about things that can happen that might not seem to be so good. They might be devastating, but end up with good quality results. That's what we're talking about. Even the accidents, mistakes, 
things like that can result in positive growth and learning. Groundless hypothesis. Groundless hypotheses, unwarrantable theories, and baseless prejudices require to be swept away so that a constructive criticism might operate freely and successfully. In other words, through um, criticizing faults and details like that that we may have out of balance and being unemotional about it and using logic and reason, we can construct an education for ourselves. Again, this is ma mainly, um, you know, when we talk about philosophy, I think it's important that everybody understand this is more of an internal thing. And when you start regurgitating everybody else's philosophies um, without a comprehension and, and full understanding of your own self, then you really maybe don't know, know thyself and you're dependent upon other people knowing you so much more that they get to direct your mind. They're your government. That's why you believe that they have that authority. Again, I remind you, Article 1, Section 8 talks about the government or the Congress makes rules for the government. It's not laws, and it doesn't apply to people in the common law, a, con uh, a common law of the land. That's only supporting the, the, the duties and obligations of the officers of the, of the United States and provides a procedural process in order to redress the, uh, the government for, for certain grievances. It later was extended to education. It became personal. Constructive criticism points out a specific deficiency and suggests a specific remedy. It is destructive in tearing down the wrong but constructive in replacing value. This is what I talk about in correcting the record. We're going to investigate the record for what it's wrong. So we're going to tear down what's wrong, but we're construct uh, in constructive um, replacement. We're going to fill in the gaps and replace the value. If we can't perfect it, then we all, all we have to do is create another one of, of, of a likeness that will be able to merge with it and, and uh, be able to accept it. This is like, oh, negative blood being the one blood that can be transfused into all of the other bloods. They can merge. It's, it's a perfected remedy. Such criticism will afford the teacher the satisfaction of having a definite basis on which to work. Again, referring to the Socratic logic process of having a belief and making a, a clarification so that it becomes definite in the minds of others, so that it's comprehended. Therefore, it's constructively advanced further beyond yourself. George M. Baker, Constructive Supervision in the American School Board Journal, February 1918. Constructivism, 1926, in reference to an abstract artist or artistic and theatrical movement emphasizing machines and mechanical devices begun in Russia circa 1920 from Russian constructivism. See constructivism, constructivist. So it's a procedure here as a mechanization, which is the same thing as the administrative courts. It's a mechanization of the executive determinations of a military government. So let's go back, finish up on here. It says voice. Voice. My yay is my yay, my nay is my nay. Very simply. Sound made by the human mouth. Voice, speech, word, saying, rumor report representative serving to port ray port ray port ray where you couldn't be seen in one jur jurisdiction there's a port and now there's a ray of light. Now they can see you. Now you're cognizable. Now you're recognizable. 
in a representative capacity. That's a personal capacity. It was per, it became personal. From French, representative, representative, early 14th century, or directly from medieval Latin, representativus. Constellation. You know, it's those constellations. It's the scar stars in the skies above. You know, it's our Father which art in heaven. It's the heavens that give us guidance to follow her seasons. We pay tribute to the Father by paying a Sabbath once a week. But it seems like everybody forgets the seasons. Paying Sabbath to the Mother. So let's go on to the next one. Family. Family as a noun. So we saw vassal and servant. And now we see family, early 15th century, as servants of a household. Our Father, which art in heaven, and he gave us this great earth as a hide. We'll see that too. As a hide, a shelter. Even though we're subject to Mother Nature's laws, all the storms and natural disasters. We have the ability to observe her and just stay the fuck away from those kinds of places. Where they have volcanoes. Things like that. We learn the seasons and know when those typhoons are coming. And we batten up the hatches. From Latin, familia, family servants. Domestics collectively, not individually. However, again, we remember 1 USC 1. Words denoting numbers, gender, gender, and so forth. And it talks about the uh, singular imports the plural, and the plural imports the singular. The servants in a household, thus also members of a household, the estate. Very simply, property, the household, including relatives and servants. So these are all of like kinds. So property is your relatives and servants. This is why um, Carl Lentz talked about making a claim on your child as property. It's relative. That's part of your family. He was absolutely correct. Abstract noun formed from familus, servant, slave, which is of unknown origin. Now, remember, this is an abstract noun. What have I said about abstract nouns? An abstract noun is a total fiction. Let's look it up. Thesaurus.com. <clears throat> you probably know that a noun is a word that refers to a person, place, or thing, person, place, thing, or idea, a thought. You understand? It's only a descriptor. It refers to the thought. This is a grammar concept we learned pretty early on in school, and there are, of course, several different types of nouns that we use to refer to all the things we experience during our lives. We eat, fo we eat food, we meet friends, we go to the store. These nouns refer to the people and physical objects that we interact with. But what about the things that we can't actually see or touch? Aren't words like love, victory, and alliance nouns too? Yes. They are, and there is a term you may not remember from your grade school days that we use to refer to these things, the abstract noun. What is an abstract noun? An abstract noun is a noun denoting something immaterial. In other words, it is not material. It is intangible. It does not exist, and it only denotes it. It's only a descriptor. 
It's a descriptor of something that does not exist. Defendant is a descriptor. And they're utilizing it with the name of a defendant, which is another descriptor, and placating that they are the same things. They are not. They are relatively different in that they are collaterally different in the very expression of the noun. One is merely an idea. The other is a physical being. Another common way to think about abstract nouns is that they refer to things that you cannot experience with the five senses. You cannot see, smell, hear, taste, or touch abstract nouns. Keith, that man over there, you can go touch him. That is a real being. You can smell him. You can see him. You can hear him. You can taste him. You can touch him. A distinct difference. And that is the real party in interest. Abstract nouns refer to intangible things that don't exist as physical objects. The dollar sign does not exist as a tangible object. You can make a tangible object that looks like a dollar sign. But it is not the dollar sign used grammatically in the writings where it's the only place it really has value. So let's go back. The Latin word rarely appears in the sense parents with their children. Family in the Latin sense, the Latin word rarely appears in the sense parents with their children, for which domus, see domestic, was used. So we see in the modern English, we've adapted family, which means both domestic and parents with their children. It's just that in Latin, it really appear, rarely appears in that sense. They use domestic for that sense. Derivatives of famulus include famula, serving woman, maid, famulanter in the manner of a servant, the male, famulitus, servitude, familiaris of one's household, private, familiaricus of household slaves, familiaritus, close friendship. In English, sense of collective body of persons who form one household under one head and one domestic government, including parents, children, and servants, and as sometimes used, even lodgers and boarders. You know, those ones given temporary residence until they decide to leave or become permanent residents. Century Dictionary is from 1540s. From 1660s, as parents with their children, whether they dwell together or not, also in a more general sense, persons closely related by blood, including aunts, uncles, cousins. Earlier, those who descend from a common progenitor, a house, a lineage. That's what I was talking about earlier. When I think every one of us uses this term family, but I don't think they really understand the true senses that it comes from. From a common progenitor, an image and likeness. Hence, any group of things classified or classed as kindred based on common distinguishing characteristics, image and likeness. Mankind. as a scientific classification between genus and order from 1753, mankind. Hobbes, 
household, family, retinue, for which we see hide. And also, Hewskype, Hewskype, or however, however these are pronounced, Hewarden, Hewan, members of a family, household, or religious house, which is cognate with Old Norse, Yan, one of the household, married couple, man and wife, domestic servant, and with Old High German, Hewo, husband, Hewa, wife, and also with Lithuanian, Semina, family, Gothic, Heinz, village, Vil, age, Old English, Ham, Hamlet, remember the Hamlet, Old English, Ham, and a Hamlet, a collection of Hams, a collection of house, collective units. Village, home, a unit, contract, postal unit in modern terms. English, home, glossary has for Latin, familia, Middle English, a menge. From Anglo-French, maisme, the household, the whole attendance upon the personal establishment of the feudal lord. As an adjective from circa 1600 with the meaning suitable for a family by 1807, family values is recorded from 1966. Phrase in a family way, pregnant, is from 1796. Family circle is 1809. Family man, man devoted to wife and children. Man inclined to lead a domestic life, not a public life is 1856. Earlier it meant thief. Huh. From family, in a slang sense, of the fraternity of thieves. Oh, you part of that family, huh? See, that's the same thing as, oh, you part of that gang, huh? Oh, you part of them thieves, huh? Oh, you part of that fraternity, huh? Oh, you part of that brotherhood, huh? Family tree, graph of ancestral relations. Domestic prepared or made in the house. This is why you're not supposed to fornicate in public. Prepared or made in the house. Household. Relating or, or relating to or belonging to the home or household affairs, rather than trade or business, they are my private affairs. Keep my name and my companion's name out your mouth. None of your business. They are our private affairs. From 1650s, as attached to home, devoted to home life, meaning pertaining to a nation, considered as a family. The nation. So when you give up the family of God, when you give up being a child of God and take upon that national patronage and become patriotic, you're a child of that nation and you become a family of that neighbor, a part of the family of that nation. And you are a local parentis or a minor child or or an incompetent child. Things like that. Those are the legal descriptions. Because if you are competent to manage your affairs all by you big old boy self and you be your own big old girl self. You would be brought up in the ways of the Lord, and you would not waver. This is what tells me that all these people that continuously tell me that they're just doing their job haven't been brought up in the ways of the Lord, even though they might have taken an oath to it, uh, that constitution under God. They somehow seem to think that they're going to get over on everybody continuously forever. It's coming to an end, folks. Internal to one's country is from 1540s. Of animals. Tame. Living under the care of humans. 
See, my dogs are my family. Because even animals include man. So therefore, I'm part of their family. Ministering the word to all creatures. Learning from them and teaching my own tricks to other people about how I learn from them. And I'm telling you again, folks, I can communicate with my dogs in silence. I don't have to speak a specific language other than some kind of signs that they've learned. Physical movements. From 1610s related domestically. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to help these guys understand, folks. Again, I'm not an anarchist against the federal government. I don't... uh, sit there and deny what the federal government is. I know exactly what the federal government is. I can point it out to you in their codes. 5 CFR 575.102. Again, federal government means all entities of the government of the United States, including the United States Postal Service and the Postal Regulatory Commission. And I am not here to destroy your law, but uphold the law. And in that, under the American interest, there's a violation um, through errors and mistakes and accidents in the record that need to be corrected. And we just need to investigate that. I'm not against the United States. I'm I'm here to help the United States relieve each other of any debt obligations. That is an armistice, an amnesty, a peace agreement. That is the intent of the law is to come to peace, pure and simple. If you want equity, you must first bring equity. If you want peace, you must first bring peace. Same concept. So let's get back to it. Because we've still got menage to go. Um, articles of home manufacture. Manufacture. Okay, when mom was um, in, in labor, doing his good works, being careful to maintain good works, somebody screwed up because somebody forgot to protect mom in her labor pains and, and her inability to think appropriately at some point in time because she was going through a, a miracle. One of the greatest events in life. And everybody around dropped the ball. Because that life was consecrated in private. And then it was manufactured on documentation. The facts were placed on a record. You gave those facts as a man. And again, mom was in labor and discharging that man from her waters. And when that man took his first breath, he became a living soul. She became a living soul. An act of God, a very gift, the very gift, the most priority, superior gift there ever is. The creation and bringing forth of another steward to minister his gospel unto all creatures. Nineteenth century use, uh, U.S. use, especially homemade cotton cloths. What cloth are you made from? There's some Bibles out there. They use human skin to bind them. Just so you know. Gross. Terrible desecration of the temple. In an image and likeness. To put, to put it in as a binder for some damn book. Domestic violence is attested from 19th century as revolution and insurrection. What about resurrection? What is that? Is that the surname? What is erection? Is that direction? Correction? 1977, as spouse abuse, violence in the home. The United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a republic form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. And on application of the legislator or of the executive against domestic violence. Hide, a measure of land now obsolete. Old English hid, hide of land, earlier hijid, 
from he, Hugh, Hewa, and Hewo, masculine and feminine, family, from or related to Hewa, and household, Hewo, a husband, master of a household, master of the household, our Father which art in heaven. There's but one Father which art in heaven. Why is everybody falling and bowing down to a patronymical lie, to lie? What gives you rise, the sacred bone? Your hips, each one of them's got four holes in it. They give you rise. Your talents, similar to talons on an eagle, your feet, is what your mind uses and implements and mechanizes to motivate you in one direction or another. And with a secondary sense of beloved dear, the notion was of amount of land needed to feed one free family and dependents, usually 100 or 120 acres, but the amount could be as little as 60, depending on the quality of the land. I want to remind you folks that in this commercial aspect of real estate investment trusts, they have to condemn the land of its natural use to then put a commercial title on it for that very commercial use. Who has a right to condemn the lands which shall not be sold forever for they are his? And then it goes on to say, we are strangers and sojourners with him. And in all of the lands of our possession, we shall grant a redemption to the land. Did everybody forget their job? Did everybody forget their duty? Did everybody forget the abundance and prosperity from the very duty of earning our daily bed by replenishing the very earth in our possession? Instead, we placate to a commercial provision of comfort and convenience so we can place the concrete slabs on it and have somebody outside the concrete slab deliver all of our processed foods and poisoned drinks and manufactured goods like TVs and internets, laptops, devices. And for goodness gracious, we got to have somebody protect us. You know, like the police that have no duty to protect you. As the courts would say. But we all know inherently they have a moral obligation. And by you giving up your responsibility and upholding that, that's why the police are your authority. You say so. You give up the authority of God. You say so. Often also defined as as much land as could be tilled by one plow in a year. Again, relating to the caretaking of the land and giving uh, uh, Sabbath, paying Sabbath to the Mother Earth, learning her seasons and going according to the, the prosperity of your fields every year. And in the seventh year, let them be. Let them refruit the nature and replenish the nature. Take only what you need in the season and store up what you need to store up in the season and let the, the rest go to the creatures of the land. Again, part of ministering to the creatures is helping provide for the creatures through the abundance and prosperity of your own self, fulfilling that duty of replenishing, not mutilating, massacring, destroying, bringing to extinction. <clears throat> Home, familiar, folk, a feeling, patriarch, medici, oh goodness, a physician. What is the first implementation that destroys the family when you're born? The very enumeration at birth brought on by a fucking doctor that takes a Hippocratic oath to Apollo and the Greek gods. You better listen up. You're born in a spell of illness, whether you like to think so or not. Name. Word by which a person or thing is denoted. A person or thing is denoted. It does not denote yourself. 
Old English Nama, Noma, name, reputation. Mane, growth of long hair on the back of the neck and shoulders, characteristic of the horse, lion, and some other animals. Amen. Hebrew, amen, means truth. Amen. Amen. Got reduced by uh, Admiralty Law. Admiralty Law minimum is 40 acres. Fun fact, when a mother is admitted to the hospital, she voluntarily becomes an inmate of the institution. She's on the infant ward, maternity ward. Who protects the mother? The father. How come the real companion didn't protect her? Because he too was indoctrinated. So let's take a look at Minaj. Minaj. Men age. I always take a look at these words that end in the term age. Age. Management. Man age. Minaj. Minaj you guys understand how closely relative this is? Menage. Menage a trois. What is a menage a trois? It's a party of three. Pay attention. Man management of a household, domestic establishment, household, family dwelling from Latin or vulgar Latin, mans mansion atticum, household, that which pertains to a house. From Latin, mansionum, dwelling, see mansion. Now, generally used, suggestive, borrowed from French phase, menage a trois. By 1853, in English publications, by 1841, in French, as the title of an opera comique. A domestic arrangement or relationship consisting of a husband and a wife and the lover of one or the other. Literally. Household of three. Household of three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is why I have that black and white diagonal sign on my back door and front door, as well as one here in this room where I have my little studio thing here, whatever you want to call it. It's a sign stating that this is a temple of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's simple, black and white. Household of three. In its simplicity, literally, it merely means household of three. The word had been in Middle English as mange, mage, main age, circa 1300, in the senses a household, a domestic establishment, company of persons living together in a house. Company of persons living together in a house. Singular is imported as the plural, and plural is, is, is imported as a singular. So the father can sign for the, for the uh, son, and the son can sign for the father. It's a company. Same thing as a damn family, ain't it? Mansion. Chief residence of a lord. Stay. Permanent abode. Abode. A body. See, El Pero. L standing for God. Lowercase, of, of course. Pero, temple. Temple is the body. 
that holds the spirit. A boat, a body, a house. We are spiritual beings and we are held in this house called earth. We live in the world but are not of the world. Habitation, we become habitual. We have habits from following the seasons and following the weekly Sabbath. Home, mansion, state, situation. From Latin, mansionum, nominative mancho, a staying, a remaining, night quarters, station. Noun of action from past participle, stem of manere, to stay, abide. See how it's abode, abide? Do you abide by the rules of the house? If so, what house is it you are abiding by? Is that the one that gives you the true abode? Or is there some kind of false abode that really doesn't exist? It's not really hiding you. Right? To remain, sense of any large and stately house is from 1510. The word also was used in Middle English as a stop or stage of a journey. Hence, probably astrological sense. Temporary home. So again, we see the the, the natural element there uh, pointing to Mother Nature and the Sabbath there. Astrological sense, temporary home, migrating with the seasons, following the, the instructions in the star, of the stars in the sky. Menage à toi. By 1853, you see menage. Message, family, household, house, home, unit. Contract postal unit. A member of the community. A unit of the community. Is it community with unity? Single number regarded as an undivided whole. Alteration of unity. On the basis of digit enumeration. United States. Enumeration at birth. They gave you a unit. They gave you a number. They gave you a number and took away your name. Secret agent man. And like I said before, we live in this dichotomy. A cutting in two, division into two classes, state of having a dual arrangement or order, Latinized from, from Latinized form of Greek. Dichotomy, where that doctor at the hospital gives birth or you uh, um, delivers in the birthing unit a child. with a legal name of a man because mom gave it to him, informed him. And that's the dichotomy. It's a, it's a bifurcation of reality and they create, a, they create a record. Teetotal, pledge to total abstinence from intoxicating drink. Hmm, an interesting liberty. Free choice. Remember we have a, a, a chosen action. Liberty, free choice, freedom to do as one chooses, freedom to do, freedom to act as one chooses, a choose in action. Also, freedom from the bondage of sin, in no scent, in no scent. And with that, we come to the end of our stream for tonight. Again, I want to appreciate everybody's uh, support. Uh, we reached 3,200 subscriptions, subscribers. So please continue to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Um, there's a PayPal link down there for anybody who wants to share some love. And remember, folks, I urge everybody to unlearn the things you've learned and get back to concise English so you can go through and do your research. Do not believe me. Do not believe the neighbor. Do not believe the government. 
and for crying out loud, do not believe your mother. Do your research so you know. Time to be big boys and girls and walk forth with good intents based on solid knowledge instead of just believing everybody else for comfort and convenience. It is hard. Believe you me, I know. It even gets kind of hectic and scary having to talk to the DA or the district DA like I do. I'm not going to let off. I'm going to let them know if they're saying stupid shit like, well, I think we pretty much heard enough from you. No, you haven't. I'm going to be at every city council and county commissioner meeting I can. I'm going to have my voice. It's going to be heard. And if you are going to object to it, I urge you to reconsider your position in this trust. You're not supposed to deny the beneficiary his benefit. Freedom of speech. Freedom of the press. Freedom to assemble. And of course, the right to petition the government for redress of grievance. And I guarantee you there's going to come a time if you keep pushing the way you do. And I'm not saying I'm going to be the one. But I guarantee you there, there's going to come a day if you keep pushing the way you do. The masses will in themselves naturally stand up and say they too have had enough. And some of them aren't going to be quite so so nice as I am, so so peaceful as I am. San Su says, to defeat one's opponent without fighting is a, of supreme excellence. That's the path I'm working on. I don't want to fight you. I don't want you to fight me either. But there are those that are willing. There are those that are armed and willing. There are those that are armed and willing and willing to hand over weapons to others that aren't quite armed yet that still are willing if it comes to that. I don't want to. I want us all to be big boys and girls. Learn how to treat each other with decency and respect and learn how to use Socratic logic in our thinking instead of getting caught up in our emotions and fear. We owe it to ourselves. Like Again, like I said, I, I see so many people that I want to take good care, quality care of animals that are injured and need their help in putting forth that, that message of stewarding and putting forth the ministry of the gospel to all creatures. Yet we seem to hold back on ourselves. I think we owe it to ourselves. And again, that's to say you got to stand up to that responsibility in order to have that effect. If you sit back and keep letting them deny the benefit and keep letting them deny being a witness to a felony, you too are culpable as well. This is a moral standpoint that affects everybody objectively. Again, if you're going to sit on that couch watching that boob tube and watching somebody else's dramatic mysterious, adventurous, comedic life or whatever, chowing down the processed foods and guzzling down the poison drinks. And when that light and siren distracts you and you look, you peek out and you see them arresting your neighbors all around night after night, when do you think they're coming after you? Do you think I, that you're special somehow? How are you special if you're doing the exact same thing? taking upon the convenience and comfort, thinking that the police have a duty to protect you, yet they say that the courts say they don't. Do you think they're going to protect you? No, they're looking for victims. They're looking for people they can profit off of. And those are the people that are doing just that, sitting back, waiting and watching. And one day they're just going to come to your door. Literally, Hitler's willing executioner. You better wake up. With that, we are done. Again, I appreciate all your support. Thank you, guys. 3,200 subscribers. Please keep doing doing the good work. There's a PayPal link down there. And you know me. I love you. But I don't give a rat's ass whether you love me back or not. That's to say I don't care if you hate me. I don't care if you don't respect me. That's on you. So may God bless you and have a good night.
Bye now.